a lot of times I say to a lot of young students that um, don't do any gig for just one reason. You know, I, I always, I have a rule of two out of three um, where um, good music, good people, good money. So if you do any gig for just one of those things and uh, it, it pays really well but the music's terrible and everyone's a jerk, you're going to leave unhappy. It doesn't matter how much it pays. Um, I mean, to a point. And then there's like, you know, I don't know, 100 grand or something. We'll talk, you know. But um, uh, it, two out of three elements. You know, good people and good music, you'll always, you're playing music that you feel passionate about with your good friends, you're always going to leave that gig happy, you know. And if you commit to two out of three every time, uh, it leads to a lot of three out of three situations. And it just, it makes it so that you set a certain uh, bar that you won't, you know, um, it, it, it makes it so that your heart's in the right place. You're playing good music with good people. That's the two out of three that ends up happening uh, more often than not if you follow that rule. And, um, and then, you know, some gigs will uh, pay well. But if they don't and they don't pay anything, you know, then um, I, you just make sure everyone's a nice person and it's music that you enjoy doing, you know. That's always my kind of first, most general, biggest advice. You know, I, I never really liked to practice for long periods of time. Um, and, but my mom would use these psychological uh, approaches to uh, get me to practice. Like she wouldn't tell me to, you know, you need to go practice and stuff. She would just be like, oh, well, you know, sounded a little, sounding a little sloppy recently, you know. So I was like, what are you talking about? You know, and I'd go practice. So, and actually Dave Brubeck was one of them, kind of like a, uh, kind of a little bit of a grandpa figure and stuff. And I, you know, it was always cool being around him, learned a lot from him. And um, the whole Brubeck family, Chris and Dan Brubeck, they, I, started traveling a lot with them when I was uh, 14. I joined their band, the Brubeck Brothers. And, um, you know, they were, they were just like uncles. So. You know, I mean, there's, there's people like um, Harish Raghavan, uh, who's playing last night on my show, and he's my, the bassist that I work with the most in my group and in Air Carl and Voyager, or a lot of other groups. He knows me so well that he also wants to, he wants me to get away from my tendencies. And so musically, there'll be things where he, he knows that, um, you know, he has a way of sussing out, like, if I start doing kind of um, something that I have a tendency to do frequently or something, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll put me outside of the comfort zone right away and he'll play. There's different, audiences are different everywhere in the world, so, and they act differently everywhere in the world. So, you know, the first time I played in um, anywhere in France, I remember that that audience was very, very tame. Like, they just, you know, it was a very subdued, Response and I, you know, Bay Area audiences. You could go out and, you know, knock over a refrigerator and they'll be like, "Ah, oh, man, you know what? We love it. We love you. This we're here." You know, and um, and they're more skeptical sometimes other places and things like that. So uh, in Japan, that'll be sometimes a very subdued response. And then afterwards, they're lining up with like hundred people waiting for you to sign something. And you know, they. But it's just how they. Um, show their appreciation might look and feel and sound a little bit different in different places. So, um, you know, adapting to that can be a uh, challenging thing. I think a well, lot of um, my sister was a jazz and rock pianist. She passed away when I was three. Um, she was 17, and, and, uh, but I got to watch her play a lot. Yeah. She, um, she had cancer, and uh, the Doobie Brothers came to Stanford Children's Hospital when she was there, and they heard her play. She sat in with them. And then they invited her to, to sit in with them at Shoreline Amphitheater. And um, uh, she recorded on, she played keyboards on one of their albums. They dedicated the album Cycles to her. And, um, but so growing up, it was kind of like this, I got to, you know, my big sister was a, you know, I was like, well, it just seemed natural that I wanted to try to do that too. And I didn't make it a career choice until I was eight years old when I asked my, I asked my dad, my favorite pianist at the time, uh, was um, uh, David Benoit, and uh, I asked him, I was like, you know, how much does David have to pay each time he performs? And he was like, no, you get paid to do that. You can, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm a musician then, so, you know, it's, it's